A couple of years ago, when I built my YouTube studio, I bought these cables right here. These are 3 meter HDMI cords. And I always thought, wouldn't it be nice to have longer cables, especially for things like an overhead camera, where you want to run the cable out of the way, you don't want to be limited in the positions and the places where you can place the camera as well as the HDMI switcher or the monitor or the recorder. But at the time, I was always told you should probably not run cables that are much longer than three meters. Maybe you can go to five or maybe eight meters, but that's really the point where quality is going down as well as signal strength is going to be lost in the way. That now has changed and that's what I want to talk about today. What you see here on the table is a 15 meter or 50 foot HDMI cable connecting my Canon EOS R to the YOLO Box Ultra on the other end. And again, this is 15 meters, which is about five times on this one. Now, why would you need a cable like this and why can't you just use a copper cable? The basic understanding I have about these cables is that when you have a copper cable and an HDMI signal, there's less technique used in comparison to, for example, an Ethernet cable that the packages are not lost and the signal strength that is sent into the cable is actually strong enough to travel over long distances, which obviously uses a little bit of power. These devices, like cameras and so on, usually don't want to spend as much energy on sending out a signal, and so that's why these types of devices probably don't really push that much electricity or signal strength into the cables. So you end up with a lesser signal strength through these types of cables. Now maybe there are more aspects to this than I understand at this time, but what I understand a little bit better is the fiber optic side of things, especially because at school and university I learned about fiber optic networking and how these types of cables actually function. The magic in these cables is actually the fiber optics cable itself, which is a fiber optic material, which basically has the ability that light actually travels through this in like a zigzag motion and the corners or the edges of the fiber optics cable are engineered in such a way that it always bounces back into the cable instead of bouncing out of the cable. And that's why this cable can actually be used over much longer distances like 100 or even 200 or 300 feet, which would probably be around 100 or 200 meters because the light in these cables has way less signal loss and more importantly, the speed at which the information travels from one end to the other is, you might be able to guess this, at the speed of light. Because it is light that is being sent from one end to the other. Now I've seen videos and also have seen in person these fiber optic cables when they're open and unshielded or have no material outside of them. This is actually really, really cool to be able to see how clear the signal comes out shooting at the other end. And you might be able to find this on the internet as well, and I will link something in the description if I find it. Now one downside of this technology is that you actually have a one-way cable. And that means you have on one end a marker which says this is the source for the information, and then on the other side of the cable you have a display. And that is because on one end of the cable the signal has to be converted into light and then you have a diode in here which is actually going to send the information into the fiber optic cable. And then on the other end you have the receiving diode which basically retranscodes the information into the digital HDMI signal that the other device expects and needs. Now the cable that I have here by Rui Pro is actually rated to 8K 60 frames per second or 4K at 120 frames per second. Right now, we are running a full HD signal through this at I think it's 60 frames per second, but I have also tested this with my Atomos Ninja 5 and the Canon EOS R5C, and I was able to run 6K raw at 30 frames per second into the Atomos Ninja 5. That is the limitation of the Ninja 5 at this point, because that only can handle 6K ProRes RAW at 30 frames per second. The Ninja or Shogun Ultra would actually be able to handle the 8K RAW and then record ProRes at up to 60 frames per second. And that of course is something that I'm interested in testing out later on as I get into more of this tech. But I have to say, I was completely blown away seeing that I was able to get 15 meters of range with this cable and still receive a 6K ProRes RAW signal 
in my Atomos Ninja 5. That was just mind-blowing to me, especially considering my prior belief about having cables that are maximum 3 meters to have strong signal. Now there are two more things to talk about when talking about fiber optics HDMI cables, and that is, for one, Please only bend it very carefully and leave enough radius for the cable to travel lightly and not break. Because if you break this cable, then the signal will no longer travel as it should. And in this way, it's actually a little bit less resistant than a traditional copper cable would. These are a little bit more bendable and I would not do the same thing with the fiber optic. The second thing is two-way communication. Usually, and most fiber optic cables are going to be this way, fiber optic cables for HDMI are a one-way street. Meaning, as I've described before, you have one that is the source and one that is the display or the receiver. When you have a cable like the Arui Pro that I have here, then this is also marked very clearly on the packaging. But they're also marking this cable as an ARC or E-ARC cable, meaning that there is a minimal amount of information that is able to travel from the display to the camera or other devices. If you're using an ATM switcher, for example, for live switching your multiple cameras, and you also use Blackmagic cameras on the other end of this, then this is actually very important to have the ARC or E-ARC feature, because then the ATM switcher can actually control the camera on the other end. For example, doing stuff like the tally light, the camera controls, exposure, focus, as well as aperture changes, and the color, white balance, and all of those things. Now, I wasn't able to test this because as of right now, I am using only cameras from Canon and live switchers from Atomos or Yolobox. So that was something that I couldn't confirm with this particular cable. And I have to trust the information that is on the packaging. The manufacturing on this is really well done. And I've been testing this cable for about two months now, and I have had no issues whatsoever. The ports on either side are solid and nice and big. And I also actually appreciate how thick the cable is on this one. I've seen very thin fiber optics cables as well. However, in the production environments that I use these cables in, I actually prefer having a little bit of a sturdier cable, which makes these a little bit harder to break. Because if you know, for example, fiber optics cables from internet and networking, those are super, super thin and very easy to break. And once that cable is broken, you really will have a hard time to reconnect things together and you have to basically have a professional do that. So I think the Rui Pro is a great fiber optics cable if you're looking for something in this realm to connect things over longer distances, to have a monitor, a live switcher, or when you wanna connect a gaming console or a laptop to a TV or projector, and you don't want to have the device sitting right next to the projector or TV. Since my experience was very positive with the Rui Pro, I will link it in the description below so that you can check it out when you're looking for a long distance HDMI fiber optics cable. And now if you wanna have professional guidance on your way to upgrading your production quality for YouTube, live streaming, podcasting, and the like, then I will have another link in the description to go to my Telegram group where we can have a discussion about these type of things. And now with all that said, I hope you have an amazing day and I will see you in another one.